Now, as we come today, friends, to the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we have here the record of the birth of the Lord Jesus. Now, you'll recall that when we began this study, I made certain statements. And one of the statements was that this gospel has a twofold purpose. It's a historical record. And you're going to note that in this chapter in a very definite way. It was written, actually, for the Greek, directed to him in particular. And for that reason, it was written to the thinking man. And it also has a great spiritual purpose, and that's to present the Son of God. And so today we have an opportunity to look at that in a very definite way. And I promise to give you a quotation or two along this line to back up these statements. I want to go back and quote from Neander, one of the great saints of the past. And he made this statement, and I'm quoting now. The three great historical nations had to contribute, each in its own peculiar way, to prepare the soil for the planting of Christianity. The Jews on the side of the religious element, the Greeks on the side of science and art, the Romans as masters of the world on the side of the political element. So that we've seen in Matthew and in Mark and in Luke that each one of these gospels were directed to a particular segment of humanity, of the human race. Matthew to the Jew, Mark to the Roman, and now Luke to the Greek. And again, it is Dr. Gregory who wrote, the Greeks are clearly distinguished from the other great historic races by certain marked characteristics. They were the representatives of reason and humanity in the ancient world. They looked upon themselves as having the mission of perfecting man. They were the cosmopolites of that age. They made their gods in the likeness of man, in their own likeness, and therefore joined to human culture utter worldliness and godlessness. And they had, you remember that altar, to an unknown god that Paul called their attention to. Paul was the proper one to go there to Athens and go into Greece and preach this gospel that Luke had written about here in this gospel. And, of course, Dr. Luke was along with him. Dr. Luke, evidently a Gentile. Now, there is something else that probably we should say concerning the Greek mission was thus evidently a part of the preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus into the world. It forced the thinking man of that age to feel and confess the insufficiency of human reason, even in its most perfect development, for the deliverance and perfection of mankind, and it left them waiting and longing for one who could accomplish this work. Now, Dr. Luke is getting ready, beginning here with chapter 2, having given us this preface and this introduction to present the Lord Jesus from his birth to his death to his resurrection and to the ascension back into heaven and the promise of his coming again. Dr. Luke covers a great deal of ground for us that's important. Actually, the thing that the Greek accomplished was to give a language that became the vehicle for getting the word out. It communicated the gospel to the world was the Greek language. And God used that man, Alexander the Great, to do that. And Housen says of Alexander, he says he took up the meshes of the net of civilization, which were lying in disorder on the edges of the Asiatic shore, and spread them over all the countries which he traversed in his wonderful campaigns. The East and West were suddenly brought together. Separated tribes were united under a common government. New cities were built as the centers of political life. New lines of communication were opened as the channels of commercial activity. The new culture penetrated the mountainous ranges of Pisidia and Lacaonia. The Tigris and Euphrates 
became Greek rivers. The language of Athens was heard among the Jewish colonists of Babylonia. And a Grecian Babylon was built by the conqueror in Egypt and called by his name. And, of course, that was Alexandria, a great city in Egypt then and even down to the present day. Now we find, with that kind of a background, we should look now at the birth of the Lord Jesus. And notice these things we've mentioned, that this man sticks close to history. And Sir William Ramsey found out he was very accurate in every statement he made.